Welcome to Ability Assistance. My name is Phyllis Jones, Chair of the North Andover Commission on Ability Assistance. My name is Stacy Leibowitz. I am the Secretary for the North Andover Commission on Ability Assistance. Today's guest is State Representative Adrian Ramos, 14th Essex. Yes. Thank Welcome. Thank you. Our, Thank fir you. our first time having you yes. in our, and your first term here in office. First term. So, um, Give us a little bit of your background other than just state representative. Sure, so I am a practicing attorney as well, still practicing a little bit. I have spent my career uh, working in domestic relations, so divorce, family law, all that. Uh, the early part of my career, I clerked in the probate and family court here in Massachusetts. And then my family and I relocated to Virginia for a few years where I practiced with a nonprofit representing uh, women um, and, and uh, fleeing violence, so did a lot of uh, domestic violence, intimate partner um, violence work, a lot of protective orders. I did some um, forced marriage work for, for children that were supposed to be forced into marriage before, oh, wow. against their consent. Um, so really kind of got familiar with uh, some of the more challenging um, components of, of the law. And uh, we came back here, and my husband grew up in Haverhill, and we decided to settle in North Andover because it's an amazing community. Yes. And so we have three girls who are all in school here in North Andover. They are uh, in fourth, sixth, and eighth grade. And uh, and after this episode, they're going to go, oh, God, Mom, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, par for the course, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, and so, uh, so again, I, I've been uh, with the Boston law firm uh, since 2018. And then in uh, 2022, I had uh, learned that um, the prior representative, Christina Minacucci, had decided not to seek re-election. Mm -hmm. And so with just a couple of weeks left to pull nomination papers and get them submitted, I uh, jumped into the race, and, um, and here I am. So Great. happy to be here. Well, no, we're happy to have you, uh, especially with your background. Yeah. Because you're sitting on what committees? So I am sitting on, I'll start with the not, not so interesting one, I'm sitting on the post audit committee. I am on the tourism committee, which I actually have really enjoyed and think is important to have a voice for Essex mm -hmm. County, because there yes. hasn't really been a good Essex County voice. And uh, there's a lot of agro, um, agro tourism in, in my district. Um, and, and quite frankly, I don't think people realize the stretch of, of tourism dollars um, into the local uh, economy. Um, so tourism, I sit on the cybersecurity and advanced IT, which was that's a little bit of a huh. for me. Um, no. And that, that's probably growing a lot it is. right now. And uh, AT, some of the bills we learned are a bit terrifying. Yeah, some of them are yeah. interesting. Um, and then I think the one that obviously fits the most here is uh, children's families and persons with disabilities, yes. which I did, you know, was a, a committee that I asked to be assigned to um, given my, my prior work history and um, just felt that I understood Which some of those not, needs. I mean, for you, for us, is an extremely important committee. Right. From Beacon Hill's perspective, people just normally don't claw their way to that particular. Right. Right. They, they don't, <laughs> they don't, they don't. Yeah. yeah, well, it's hard. You know, we hear some really um, traumatizing stories. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's just, it's heavy at times and yes. people, um, you know, don't necessarily want to, to you know, to be in those heavy, heavy roles. It, it's heart-wrenching. It is yeah. heart-wrenching. And, and, you know, you have to really have a thick skin to, yeah. to be able to, to hear those stories and to make the tough decisions right. associated with the bills that come before you and the hard stories right. that, that you heard because, right. you know, you sit there and go, my heart yeah. wants this, but the law needs right. that. Right, and if you sit in those committee hearings and you hear these personal stories, it does make it, you just wanna say, okay, we wanna do this for yes. everybody, yes. right? That's what, that's what, I mean, certainly I, I have felt that way. I wanna make you know the world better for all of these families. But again, it is about finding that balance. Balance. And I yeah. guess with that, what are some <clears throat> of the bills, I know we were talking off camera yep. about some of the, I guess about 30 bills that have so far kind of made it through part of the process. Right, have come out of committee. So yeah, I mean, so there's a broad um, array of, of um, bills that have come out of committee. Uh, some of the ones that I'm the most excited about are um, bills um, to expand access to changing tables in public uh, facilities, oh, so important. both diaper changing tables and just adult, uh, I mean, adult size changing yeah. tables, which to this community 
I, I think would be life changing. It's huge. It's you huge. know, um, yeah. as a as a mother of three girls, when and and they're close in age, when they were little, I remember being like, "There's no, there's never any <laughs> changing tables in the men's room. Why can't right. my husband ever do this?" Um, and so that was challenging in of itself. But but amplifying that, looking, you know, at families who have older children, larger children yes. that have uh, yeah. have the need to have changing space, a safe changing space where they it's dignified and it's yes. not. Yeah. You know, and, and they don't have to limit where they're going. I mean, you know, having to always think, okay, can we take them to this museum? Can we take them exactly. to this theater? Exactly. Um, it's a it's something that people who haven't, you know, have have, you know, typical neurotypical and, and able bodied mm -hmm. children don't have it's to not think in about their purview. Uh, I at actually all. had a resident and you don't know this, um, but I actually had a resident approach me recently. They have um, incontinence issues. Mm -hmm for other medical reasons right. and there were no you know yeah. they unfortunately had issues because of the fact that a local retail store that has a bathroom that they have available for their employees would not even in an emergency allow this person to utilize the bathroom right. and then they had to go somewhere else and it was a great embarrassment and mm -hmm. You know that's something else that yeah. yeah so those bills have moved out of the out of the committee so i'm hopeful that's that good. we can you know we'll see some of those and you know we have to start with public buildings right yes, that's of where course. we have the, that's of where we have the most ability to make those changes um but even that i think would be a huge you know huge change It'd be such an improvement such for people an improvement. and i think it's building that awareness like you yes. say for somebody who's neurotypical they don't think about these things or or with families that don't have these concerns right. because I, I work with a population of people who and even some of the staff I work with it's an issue and you suddenly have that awareness of going out yes. it's so limiting for them and that's the last thing we want to do and is it's limit their always mobility. an issue of you don't realize you need something whatever that Until something is you. <laughs> you know yeah. fill in the blank it could yeah. be you know a door opener yeah you don't realize that's or a ramp you don't realize right. what that something exactly. is you need until all of a sudden you realize it's not there and it should be. Yeah. And so, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm still practicing part-time, very, very part-time <laughs> these days, which is quite all right. Um, but, but prior to that, when I was practicing, you know, some of the courthouses in the state are old. Yes. Now, many have moved into newer facilities, um, but there was one facility, one courthouse in particular, where I, I years ago had a, a case that was a guardianship and the person was in a wheelchair and there was uh, not a, a great um, car, uh, handicap the time it was called handicap. I yep. right, we'll right. get to that um, bathroom, <laughs> and um, and they really worried about how they were going to get through. You know, they were going to get through the hearing if we were, if we were going to be there too long, and that's you know how they were going to get and in and out of this space. And people should be worrying no. about <clears throat> because they're already dealing with the issue of this hearing and the stress of that, and then having to worry on top of that just about their own ability to use a bathroom yep. or so, not being able to use yeah, the bathroom. Yeah. Very concerning situation. And so, speaking speaking of that, so the, the I think the bill that I am one of the bills I'm proud of is is just this week we voted out a bill and the House passed uh, this bill to really um, rid our code, our, our statutes of archaic language That's great. Um, that are harmful Yay. to people in this community. So That's great. Um, much like here, and you guys were ahead of your times. Yes. Um, you know that we yeah. were moving towards using ability and ability mm -hmm. assistance. Um, so we're ridding the code of the word autistic, and in place will be autism. Yep. Okay. Um, we are ridding the, the code of the word handicapped and disabled. That's great. Um, so how, how are you getting <coughs> around that? It'll, so it'll be person or persons with disabilities. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I think I think probably most important to, to many and our heartfelt is is mental R. And I don't even want to say yes. the word out loud. I was yes. going to ask um, about that. And because so that will be stricken. That's from still the code. kind and, of and even though there's now <coughs> DDS, right? It used to be yeah. Department of Mental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but you still see I'll, the language. I'll say it yes. because people are not <laughs> necessary. It was the Department of Mental Retardation. Retardation. Yes. Yeah. Not a nice word. We don't no, like we it. We don't use it anymore. And well, and for the most part. And unfortunately, you know, if you're looking for a state job, it actually shows it as that, yeah, the as the agency right. in terms of right. 
the job the, posting exactly. as opposed to DDS, which is right. the Department of Developmental Services. Which for those will who hopefully don't know. be mass ability It sir. will, yes, yes. And so I think we were talking a little bit off camera that this bill has been kicking around for several sessions. Yes. And I know there are a lot of people in the community that were frustrated with the delay. But you know, this is not a this is not a we're going to change it in you know this code or for this agency. Right. This is a, a broad sweeping yeah. across the entirety of all of Massachusetts statutes, yeah. and so you really have to look at how does it impact yeah. all of these different organizations? Yeah. What forms are they going to change? Whose titles are they going to yeah. change? How much is it going to cost to order new letterhead and new business, business cards, cards? And yeah. how are we going to change train? the programming yeah. on yep. the the signs, the signs, the building? Right. <laughs> I mean, it's. Yep, and it's handicap is another word that, that's yeah. going to be stricken. So it is it is very broad sweeping. It does have uh, consequences, and it, and so it in order to make sure that it's done right, it just took a lot of time. And yeah. I really commend this committee in the in the prior right. iteration of this committee for the uh, amount of time that they really spent to make sure it was thorough that's and it right. was done right. Um, so I'm hopeful it's going to go to the Senate and pass quickly and get on the des and, governor's and desk. I know we've spoken <clears throat> to Senator Tarr, and <laughs> there hasn't really been. It's any, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. there really is it's no kind of opposition. It's one of those common sense yeah. kind it's of a consensus type of thing. Yeah. yeah, it just takes time. It just, again, making sure it was done understand. right. And the exactly. other thing we were talking about is, you know, then we have all these new bills. Yep. Yes. And the new bills were written to prior to the prior yeah. code. So we have to make sure that we're mindful of how we're, how we're moving those through as well. So, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's almost a, like putting the cart before the horse right. type of a situation. Right, 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 right. So it's important to get that through yeah. so that the governor doesn't then sign a bill. Using that out. Right, right. Right. Exactly. But I, I and I you know, I think it's gonna take some time for people in the state to adjust to the change. Mm -hmm. I mean, if those in this community know it and understand it, but I do think, you know, even just yeah. like the word handicap, I think, might be the most well, difficult for people to overcome. Exactly. Well, we're creatures of habit. We are. Yes. And I think right. in some instances it's not intentional. Right. Because I think for the most part, people have really come along in this process, yep. but I think we're all guilty of kind of sliding into that mm -hmm. language. Handicap just, parking. Yeah. Right. That I so think is probably will, where it's that's going to be the, be most, the, the most challenging. I completely agree. So it's going to take time. Mm -hmm. I agree that, you know, but we'll get there because the process is being supported yep. by by the state government. Yep. And I do, I, I hope that in that change, you know, when we look at the, the spots that are reserved, <laughs> that people will maybe start to realize it's not just people in wheelchairs. That's talking about invisible or hidden disabilities. disabilities. Because you read that, I read that all the time about somebody being accosted, going into a public space, they've parked, and maybe they're able to walk, but maybe there's something else going on right. that people don't know. It's like, well, you don't look like you have a, a right. disability. Right. And I think there's a lot that has to continue to happen to educate people something around what that looks like. Something even as small as, you know, Bobo, <coughs> who a lot of our audience has met, yes. you know, Zachary's yep, Zachary service, service animal. Yep. You know, if I can't get a spot that's reasonable far enough out, sometimes it's difficult to get Bobo in and out of the car. Yeah, right. And I'm in the process of actually talking to his doctor about maybe getting a placard for when Bobo is yeah, in the that, car. That makes sense. To be able to have just that extra space. Right. Yeah. So that Bobo can safely get in and out of the car, right? Yeah. Which is, I mean, people are like, well, it's a dog. Well, yeah, but you know, do you want your dog to try to get in and out of the car right. when you know, right? Where the right. dog's tail could possibly, you know, or you're figuring out, do someone, do I have to ask someone to hold the dog so I can right. back out so there's enough space? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of exactly you know, around that. exactly, and I can't tell you the number <clears throat> of times Zachary's been in a store with Bobo, and people have been like. Oh, is your son blind? It's like, well, no. People don't understand what a service dog does. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. there's there's, there's a lot of misconceptions. Right, yeah. There's right. a big, big educational component. I mean, I've worked in disability services for about 20 years, if not more. Kind of dating myself there, <laughs> but it it really well, is you were frustrating. Five when we Thank started. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But it's it's very frustrating to see that sort of um, lack of understanding because I think it's important to understand that at any moment a disability can affect any of us. That's the thing. And, and any also of us what or the, our family members. And, and what a disability really what it means. is. Yeah. Yep. What and, it could be. And so, I mean, speaking of, of hidden disabilities, I, I did speak with someone who advocated um, 
for expansion of the right uh, to, to get those kinds of placards and use those spaces. And it was someone um, who essentially had an issue around um, you know, to toileting yeah. and looks and acts and seems like perfectly yeah. ably bodied, but sometimes there aren't spaces available and they need to get to their car so they can get somewhere quickly. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, again, I think we need to, we need to be more open-minded and, exactly. and, and willing as, as a society exactly. to, to less judgmental <laughs> and less judgmental. Well, so one, once hopefully this legislation goes through, gets signed by the governor, what, what are we hoping to look to see to kind of educate people to mm. refocus so that, I mean, I know you can't go out there and, you know, literally knock on people's <laughs> doors and say, this is the new language. Right. Um, but, you know, what are we looking at possibly seeing in terms of at government offices, in public places? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, ha I have to say I didn't, I didn't dig into that component of the bill, but I know that that was certainly a... a there was a lot of discussion around mm -hmm. training and education and public yeah. service announcements, but I, I don't recall off the top of my head. I'm sorry. Yeah, I would imagine <laughs> really that good. will trickle down, especially yes. through government agencies right. like DDS, MRC, Mass Rehabilitation Commission, right? All and and just all agencies, and then out to the public, right. ideally, um, because I know where I work, we definitely do a lot of even though we support people with disabilities there's still a lot of education around understanding like for example um it's i think deaf history month this month which is important to to highlight and in that training there were things i didn't even understand and i work with somebody who's who's hearing impaired but understanding the culture even within mm -hmm. that yes. community and the different right. so it's really getting that word out i think is very important, but how that's that's I'll done. I'll is even plug story. something on <laughs> behalf of North Andover Cam. Yeah. They've been trying. I don't know if you've seen it. They've been trying to get legislation passed um, for closed captioning. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have. I'm I'm embarrassed to say. Yeah, we don't have. We it. don't have closed captioning for this program. Yeah. And we're community access. We're funded publicly through. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I know there are a few. There were a few community access related um, bills. Um, and I do think some of them ha are on extension and some have come out of committee. But again, we, we did send a lot out of committee. Mm -hmm. So without my notes in front of me, it's hard no, for me no, to- No, no, but, but uh, I mean, but, yeah. but, it's, yep. but it's the little things yep. that people don't up. think of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when, for example, select board is having their, their meeting and it's broadcast, there's no closed yeah. captioning right. there. Yeah, so right. people can't. You know, if yeah. they are deaf or hearing impaired, they're not going to be able to partake in that information. But, but they can wait for it yeah. to get onto YouTube because if it, you know, a lot of YouTube then will stuff be. can then, you right. know, automatic. But if it's, but if it's something that's live, yeah. they, they don't have the ability to do that. Yeah. And I know that that's something that at least here they've been, we've been fighting with yeah. them to be able right. to, to have. To have. Um, so, but that's that's my little that's a different plug. <laughs> that's a different <laughs> another thing. conversation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But so. no, what what else? You know, other than this great opportunity to kind of refocus the Commonwealth and bring it more into the twenty first century. Yeah. What else do we have coming out of committee that you can highlight for us that you can think of off the top of your head? Um, you know, there there's a lot of bills around uh, coming out of committee around homelessness mm. okay. and providing um, services and access to um, access to things for for homeless um, individuals, particularly around um, their needs if they are people right. with disabilities. Um, so I thought that was great because I don't, you know, I think there's a, again a, there's another stigma around yeah. the homeless community. Yes. Yeah. which is really um and we have such a housing crisis here right which for, for, we won't get into the politics right. of it all but, but for a variety of reasons right. that doesn't help and i think when you talk about homelessness you have a large segment of the population who have mental illness yes and potentially a coexisting drug addiction they kind of go hand in so, hand veterans, so that is veterans. right and so there is uh, this one bill around access to Mental, um, mental health services for, for individuals that are right. homeless. And you know, so this is, this is I think one thing sitting in committee that I, I hadn't realized. One of the biggest problems in accessing state services when you're homeless is you don't have an address yeah, to put down. Yeah, I knew you were gonna say that. 
I knew it. So yeah. this, so this, so this kind of address, it's it's geared You're in a catch twenty two, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. No, that that is a huge deal, and yeah. unless you have a friend who, you know, I mean, some people who are housing insecure, <laughs> yeah. and people need to realize there's a true difference between being housing insecure, which is people who sometimes, you know, go from couch to couch to couch right. type of a thing, but they have someplace safe, right. relatively speaking, to sleep as opposed to... They're on the know, street. A, exactly, yeah. and people who don't commute into Boston may not see it as much. But I take the train into town, you know, when, when I go into town yeah. for, for work, and, you know, especially like a downtown crossing, I see it mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Where I get off... So much worse. Where you see people literally sleeping on the benches, in the tea, you know, because that's the only place they have to be able to sleep. Right. So, I mean, something, and I would suspect, I mean, I, I obviously I don't sit there and, and try to figure out, but I would suspect based upon behaviors that I've seen, a lot of them, whether it be addiction or mm -hmm. developmental or, you know, anything, that they probably are not just somebody mm -hmm. who is housing insecure, yeah. but there's something else going, going on. on. Right. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I think you and I talked about a little bit off offline mm -hmm. um, was uh, the supported decision making bill, yes. which um, there are a couple variations of it. And so last session, a version of it passed the Senate, and uh, it came to it came before us again this year. And I said I I I kept quiet during many committee hearings as I'm kind of navigating waters and learning, um, <clears throat> but I spent some time uh, working uh, for a law firm that represented nursing homes. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm familiar with guardianships and Rogers hearings. Mm -hmm. And so for the audience, those are um, uh, in, or hearings that are required if psychiatric medication yeah, is right, going to right. be administered, right. which is a blessing because that doesn't happen in a lot of states. Right. And it protects people who are otherwise vulnerable, you know, may not have the ability to consent to right. an increase or decrease of their medication. Um, so supported decision making, as I'm sure you know, um, the idea around supported decision making is really to help amplify and support people who are adults um, and maybe as minors, their parents were involved in helping make decisions for them. And they don't really need a guardianship. They just need, you know, maybe their, their parents or their, their guardian to kind of help them make those decisions. Navigate, right, right. Like navigate a little, that yeah, a little. Some medical some, or even, right. you know, residential, yep. choosing where to live. And, so, and so a lot of the families that testified in support <coughs> of this hearing were families of adults on the autism spectrum. And you know, some some of the adults themselves spouse, self spoke to how you know they needed their parents to just help them. Mm -hmm. They didn't need their parents to make the decision, but they needed their parents to help explain the decisions, right. weigh out the pros and cons. Um, and so this was sort of be a mechanism that's sh you know short of a of a of a guardianship, but does give them that that extra support, right. they autonomy, need, and right. give them some autonomy right. and independence. Um, <clears throat> and I am fully supportive of the idea. But I did have some concerns about the language in the bill as mm -hmm. it was written, and, and you know some some versions of the bill. Now, is that coming as an attorney? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. So you know the bill, uh, you know one of the versions I was looking at just said anybody can enter into in, into a supported decision making agreement. It can be anybody. So Phyllis, I could say to you, you know Phyllis. Um, you have this disability, so you you should let me be your supported decision maker, and let's enter this agreement. And it, the statute wouldn't outline what has to be in the agreement, and then that's that. And then in doing so, you know, you're opening up ability to access information that might otherwise be private, like you bank that, accounts, like maybe? bank accounts, mm -hmm. like medical. Now you then have to provide me that access, but there isn't a judicial oversight like right. there is in a guardianship, right? right. And um, so it you opens know, the door for somebody to be taken advantage so of my, potentially. So that was my concern. I'm concerned about looking, you know, looking at those vulnerable mm -hmm. populations, looking at people who might be in coercive control relationships, who might be an elderly person that doesn't have a family member or friend who's really looking out for their best interest. Um, right. and, and then can be taken advantage of. And I mean, this the population you're talking about already is mm -hmm. being taken advantage of to some degree. I mean, even yeah. something as simple as, and we're hopefully gonna have somebody from the police department yeah. on soon, 
scammers. Oh my yes. goodness! Yeah, that's I huge. mean, I get. Yeah, I mean, my family members have been affected. I, by that. I, I get. I can't even yeah, tell horrible. you the number of scam calls I get. Oh yeah, yeah. Where yeah. it's yeah, supposedly the government making mm -hmm. sure that I've got my Medicare card and that I'm using it properly. Medicare's never got. The IRS. You know, Medicare's. Yep. Uh, the IRS saying my social security number is never, go, you know, going to be, you know, uh, cut off. The IRS is never going to cut off your social security number. Or, um, you know, a local pharmacy making sure that, you know, you're getting your medication and, and wanting to know whether or not your health insurance needs to be adjusted. Again, these are things that right. are never going to happen in, you know, in reality. And these are, this is already yeah. a vulnerable right. population, and if they're being taken advantage of that way, in a much more that close ho holistic yeah. type of an environment, and so it's in, very you know, easy. in my practice of law as a litigator, I am having to apply the law um, to cases regularly and having to argue to judges how to apply them and how not to apply them. And seeing how people take advantage of or manipulate to the extent that, that they can. And so if we're going to put a law on the books that creates a supported decision making arrangement, which again, I support, I want to make sure that there aren't loopholes, right. yes. that, it tight, is that it is tight, that it is, that it, that it provides what, what, you know, and serves those families, but it doesn't kind of create this wide range of, of which, you know, without which is some the parameters. Attorney to attorney, the <laughs> upside of having attorneys serving, right. not every not everybody has to be an attorney. No, but no. the upside to having attorneys who serve in public service, like in the state legislature, to be able to sometimes see those those little nooks and crannies that may not be seen right. by other people. And I do think that there were some advocate advocates that are frustrated with me um, because I, I said I couldn't support the bill as it was written. Right. I, I just couldn't of, do it because of these concerns. Right, the loopholes. And when I raised those questions in the committee hearing, I got a lot of, you know, just <laughs> like we don't really know what to say or how to yes. respond. Because you're coming from a place of I'm trying to be protective not trying to block right. something right. that we need. You're trying to make sure that the, I mean, as an attorney, you're looking at those missing pieces, the spaces yes. in between, and, so the, and, so and taking the big picture. Exactly. And so, you know, when you when there is a guardianship, there is judicial yeah, oversight. There absolutely. is accountability to that guardian. Yeah. And, you know, maybe some people still take advantage, and maybe yes. some people don't take their role as seriously, but it's there. It is someone else having eyes yeah. on it. And I, I just worry. And, um, and I think that makes complete sense. You hear the stories all the time, like in a nursing home or even yes. beyond the nursing home. Yes. Like somebody's a caregiver going into somebody's home. How many times have we heard this person stole the other, you know, this elderly person's and, and, and you know, I don't, life savings? And I don't, I don't think that this is going to prevent that entirely. Right. But, but having the guardrails right, exactly. and accountability to accord accountability somewhere to some, because I'm a guardian, I'm a yeah. legal guardian for my sister Ann Rogers. It's the same idea. I have to file a report every year. Right. If I don't, they're going to be hunting me down. Right. And I don't have financial oversight, but I have other oversight. And if I did, which is just it's as, just as important. Yeah. Because I'm her Rogers monitor around the psychiatric medications, so the guardrails are in place. And even with guardianship, it's not always full guardianship because I want my sister to right. have. Right. Right. So each piece. I, I think it's understanding that bigger picture that sometimes families, while they mean well don't see that so it's important to have that bigger picture because as but we it discussed, also gives your protection yeah, as well as well yeah. Be yeah because then you've got if you've got somebody overseeing what you're doing yep yep then it's not meant to block you right. Right. from doing the best you can it's to protect both parties involved. exactly right exactly and you know quite frankly right fr quite frankly for some of these um, adults on the autism sp spectrum young adults they may only need it for a couple of years yeah. and yes. then they kind of find their place right yeah. But there were no, there's no, you know, terms around the length of this agreement, and should there be a right. term, and should it need to be renewed, and should right. there be some, you know, and I'm not suggesting we add judicial oversight. I think it is. I think yeah. that I think that is a bit of a burden, and I think this is right. intended for families to to not have to take on that um, those legal fees and all that. Right. And right. and I, again, I think there's a place. It's different from guardianship. It is different. as it should be. As it should be, and yeah. I, I do think there's a space for it. I think we just have to be mindful. And yeah. also making sure we can undo it. Because if someone isn't doing their job right or yeah. is taking advantage, it needs to be something that we can yeah. undo without having Similar to Similar to if you have yeah. a parent or a 
legal guardian of a exactly. child. Exactly. We need to be able to do what needs to be done to protect the child. Right. 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 Which so. I know is something you would know well about based upon your private practice. Right. Yeah. Right. And so you know, we've all heard, unfortunately, too many yeah, stories. Too many hard stories. Yeah. yeah. In the news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I, again, and this is why I think it's important that we do take time. You know, I, I, I hear a lot of frustration around, well, it takes so long for bills to become laws. And, you know, I agree. It does. Yeah. Yes. But we want to do it right. Yeah. We want to do, we want to be thoughtful. Why. We want to think about all these circumstances yeah. and we want to get it right. Because once it's on the books, yeah. that's it's it. really hard to change. Yeah. And I mean, I know as a state employee during the day, you're a state employee during the day, yeah. you know, based upon what our jobs are, and we work in two different agencies right. dealing with two different exactly. sets of laws, you know, the law is based upon what is written in the statute and then pulled down by mm -hmm. what's called the CMR, yeah. which is the code, yeah. okay? Um, for people who don't know that, <laughs> um, you know, the four walls are the four walls. Yeah. They and become no matter, regulations. Exactly. I have CMR codes I have to follow. Yeah. And for those outside of it, they don't they, necessarily understand They don't understand realize it, that. But there is a process and there's a reason for that process. And, and no matter how much somebody wants to tug on your heartstrings about whatever yeah. that thing is, they're still the four yeah. walls, and you do need to be careful of what that statute says, yeah. because otherwise that CMR is going to be formed in a way that it, it, it's a trickle down, yeah, okay. so that it's going to eventually affect me, right? Yeah. you. Well, and so I mean, just even taking a look at this bill that we passed this week to change this archaic mm -hmm. language, that has been before um, the legislature for more than four sessions, I think. Wow. Really? Yeah. So it wasn't just this governor who no, proposed, no, okay. So no, it it's been, prior. I, I want to say five sessions. Wow. This might be the fifth session, which is 10 so years. 10 yeah. years. 10 years. And so time, that's how long it's taken to change it. So if we're yeah. going to do this. Because of the ramifications. Because of the ramifications. Right. When you think about it, it's the language, drumming out the language, but also then the ramifications, because we were talking off camera about the um, domino effect yep. of how, okay, once this language is changed, it goes through probably the CMR and regulations. It goes through the signage, the business yes. card, everything. So, yeah. so yeah. it's it's a good thing, but there is that, right? That domino effect. Yeah. Thank you for ha yeah. for coming on. Our time has come to an end. I know. <laughs> I'm getting. We're getting. We've gotten the cues. <laughs> um, and you know, we invite you to come. Yeah. We'll have you back on every term. Sounds good. Yeah. Every term that you are Knock here. On wood. Where's yes. the wood? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> I just. Um, every term, we will always invite yes. you back on. If there's ever something that's come up that you really want to get out there to the residents of North Andover, just call us. We'll even have you on on a special episode right, yeah. to, to put it out there. And, and if there are things that are important to you and your community, I mean, I know, Phyllis, you're a great advocate and you, you have no problem reaching out and saying, hey, yeah. which, but that's important. So I, yeah. I hope that people and, know that they can they And can the do committee the has sort of changed its focus a just a little okay. bit. We've added a few things, and one of the things we've done is we've started reviewing legislation. Yeah. We can't review everything right. any more than you can. You've got five million bills that come yeah. across your yeah. desk on a daily basis. But when we find something, we bring it to the select board who then, you know, they'll either say, yes, bring it to the state legislature, right. Right. or they'll say, mm, nope, we don't want anything <laughs> to do with that, right. um, to try to, again, assist the, the residents of the town of North Andover. Yeah. So, it really is a symbiotic relationship yeah, it is. It is. that yeah, comes so. from us all the ways up and then back down again. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you again. Well, thank, thank you, you for having me. It was a pleasure to be here. Same, Same here. here. Same here. Thanks. You can reach State Representative Ramos at 617-722-2140, or you can email her at adrian.ramos at mahouse.gov. If you're looking for any Commonwealth office, simply visit mass.gov and search for the office you're looking for. You can get the executive, the legislative, the judicial, anything more than you can possibly want. We want to thank our crew this month from GLTS, Alex Santiago, GLTS alum, John Cafori, Northern Essex Community College um, student, Cassie Buwanan, Buwanano, sorry, I keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> And also from North Shore Upper Academy, we have Zachary Jones. So thank you to all. We've had a little snafu in the past week uh, for our May and our June guests. Mm. 
We hope to have, hope to have a member of the North Andover Police Department coming in in May to discuss watching out for scams. Unfortunately, they've gotten better. Wow. And then our June guests backed out, so we're seeking somebody to replace them. So hopefully we'll be able to round out our 23-24 season and their schedule soon. And we're already also starting to look forward to our 24-25 season, looking ahead, planning, planning for that 50th yeah. episode sometime yeah, next, next year, year, towards the end of our 25 season. And just a reminder, town meeting is coming up on Tuesday, May 14th at mm. 6 p.m. As always, if you need an accommodation, please call town hall at 978-688-9500 for arranging any sort of accommodation. And as always, we're consistently looking for new topics to explore here at Ability Assistance. And we truly would love to know what topics you want more information about. If there's anything specific you'd like to learn more about, please email me directly at pjones at northandovera.gov or call me, go straight to my cell phone, 978-494-0136. In addition to watching through your cable station, you can catch all of our programs on demand. Let's see, we've got YouTube, we've got the Com Comcast mm -hmm. app through Roku, Roku, Apple TV, their own apps on cell phones. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Town North Andover website, the Commission's Facebook page, the Town uh, North Andover CAMS mm -hmm. website, and also we roll out the podcast on Podbean for those of you who'd rather just listen to us rather than watch us. <laughs> and for all of us here at Ability Assistance, thank you.